How y'all doing? So, recently, one of the fans in my uh, laptop messed up on me, waiting for some things to come through so I can get it replaced. <clears throat> However, I don't want to do that until I get this charger for this other laptop. So I have to make these videos like this because the other process of saving just four pictures or five pictures or eight pictures for 15 to 30 minutes takes anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour to save on the computer. It's just too long for me to have the system on. I don't want to burn it all the way out and lose all the information I have. So uh, I decided we'll do it like this. And we're going to pick up uh, pretty much where we left off. And it's going to be Moses going into Pharaoh. And if you don't remember where we really just left off, or one of the more last significant pieces is that Aaron goes to go meet Moses. The Lord tells him to go do this. And before this happens, the angel of the Lord sought to slay Moses. The only reason why he didn't get killed is because his wife circumcises his son. And she tells the angel that the staunch of her son's circumcision is pretty much filled Pretty much, you know, the blood and, you know, it, it stinks, you know, it's unclean. You're holy, it's unclean, it's unholy for you to do that. Now, I don't know if he had the presence of somebody who sought to slay. Clearly, his demeanor gave away, I have no good intent. You understand? Having said that, let's keep reading. Verse 1 of chapter 6. And after this... Excuse me. Let's read verse 31 to give context to verse 1. And the people believed and rejoiced because God visited the children of Israel and because he saw their affliction. And the people bowed and worshipped. Now what this is really saying right now is, and, and, and then I'm, I'm going to read the part. He, he, he pulls his hand in, boom, his hand comes out white, puts it back in, boom, it comes back out brown. He throws the rod on the ground, it becomes a snake, he picks it back up, again it becomes a, a rod again in his hand. Okay, having said that, I'm going to keep reading. And after this, went in Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh, and they said to him, These things say the Lord God of Israel, send my people away, that they may keep a feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is he that I should hearken to his voice so that so that I should send away the children of Israel? Stop right there. The he is underlined and the his are, I mean they're, they're 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 not they're not capital. So I just think it's just speaking to the to the level of no respect that Pharaoh has. For the Lord God, the Most High at this point, I have no respect for him. Because Pharaoh believes he's God. Let's go ahead and keep it going. And Pharaoh said, Who is he that I should hearken to his voice, so that I should send away the children of Israel? I do not know the Lord, and I will not let Israel go. And they said to him, Oh, here now it gets interesting. Listen, the God of the Hebrews has called us to Him. Mm. It went from being the Lord God of Israel. You see how they tried to play that first? Like, well, we're just going to pretty much speak up for the children of Israel, and then they're like, "No, bro, understand, the God of the Hebrews." Right on. See, when they say the Lord God of Israel, you have to keep it in context that, that the Lord God, the Most High, said that Israel is His firstborn. Right on. Speaks these words through his Messiah by medium of an angel. This stuff is deep anyway. And the Messiah himself is a type of angel, but that's neither here nor there. It's all it's all very, very structured. Very, very organized. I like it. However, the God of the Hebrews is a much more general broad term. And it encapsulates anyone there who's under the Hebrew banister, who's not the seed of Abraham, right? And also those not the children of Israel. Verse 3, And they said to him, 
The God of the Hebrews has called us to him. We will go, therefore, a three days journey into the wilderness that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God, lest at any time death or slaughter happen to us. And the king of Egypt said to them, Why do ye, Moses and Aaron, turn the people from their works? Depart each of you to your works. He's like, look, man, why y'all got the people all worked up, man? You got them all, they don't want to work and stuff, man. Get back to work, both of y'all, to whatever y'all do. And Pharaoh said, Behold, now the people is very numerous. Behold now, the people is very numerous. Let us not then give them rest from their work. And Pharaoh gave orders to the taskmasters of the people and the accountants, saying, Ye shall no longer give straw to the people for brick making as yesterday and the third day, but let them go themselves and collect straw for themselves, and that shall impose on them daily the rate of brick making which they perform. And that shall not abate anything, for they are idle. Therefore have they, therefore have they cried, saying, Let us arise and do sacrifice to our God. Let the works of these men be made grievous, and let them care, and let them care for these things, and not care for vain words. So listen what he's saying. I want to make the work so hard on them that they're, they're, they're too stressed out to think about sacrificing to the Most High. They're only worried about trying to, how, how am I going to collect straw to make these bricks and still make my quota? Right. Come on. <laughs> this dude is evil, man. It's crazy. Verse 10. And the taskmasters and the accountants hasted them. And they spoke to the people, saying, Thus says Pharaoh, I will give you I will give you straw no longer. Go ye yourselves and get for, get for yourselves straw, whensoever ye can find it, for nothing is diminished from your rate. So the people dispersed in all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw, and the taskmasters hastened, saying, Fulfill your regular daily tasks, even when straw was given even as when straw was given to you. And the accountants of the race of the children of Israel, who were, who were set over them by the masters of Pharaoh, were scourged. And questioned, men saying, why have, ye not why have ye not fulfilled your rates of brick work as yesterday and the third day today also? So it's pretty much saying that the accountants came to the children of Israel talking that, talking that nonsense. Like, why have they pretty much trying to put the pressure on you? The same dumb nonsense that loan sharks do today is the same evil wickedness that people have been doing. It, it's not brand new, okay? So if you think I can feel bad for an Egyptian today, tomorrow, even when the Most High God blesses them, I'm not the Most High, so I'm not blessing them. And it's that simple. Verse 15. And the accountants of the children of Israel went in and cried to Pharaoh. The, right, the accountants of the children of Israel, right. Our own people who can count and can do this stuff. Right, like, this it's, it's ain't right. Went in and cried to Pharaoh, saying, Why dost thou act thus to thy servants? Straw is not given to thy servants, and, t and, and, tell, and they tell us to make brick. And behold, thy servants have been scourged. Thou wilt therefore injure thy people. And he said to them, And he said to them, Ye are idle, ye are idlers. Therefore ye say, Let us go and do sacrifice to our God. Now then, go and work, for straw shall not be given you. Yet ye shall return the rate of bricks. And the account of the children of Israel saw themselves in an evil plight. Men saying, Ye shall not fail to deliver the daily rate of brick making. <clears throat> See? I, I, evil. I told you it was evil. It's wicked. That's an evil wicked. That's wicked. That's wicked as hell. Verse 29. Excuse me, verse 20. And they met Moses and Aaron coming forth to meet them as they came forth from Pharaoh. Verse 21, And they said to them, the Lord, look, the Lord look upon you and judge you, for ye have made our, our savor abominable before, before Pharaoh and before his servants to put a sword in his hand 
to put a sword in his hands to slay us. And Moses turned to the Lord and said, I pray, Lord, why hast thou afflicted this people? And wherefore hast thou sent me? So stop right there. However, he's turning. He didn't say he looked up, but he said he turned to the Lord. Mm. Understand this physical, he, can, he must feel this presence there. The spectra I'm talking about. But let's not I get too carried away, but understand what's going on here. And this is the Lord telling the story to Moses, who's telling us the story. Keep that in mind, too. That's amazing, isn't it? And they said to them, The Lord look upon you and judge you, for ye have made our savor abominable before Pharaoh and before his servants to put a sword into his hands to slay us. I pray. Excuse me. And Moses said, excuse me, and Moses turned to the Lord and said, I pray, Lord, why hast thou afflicted this people? And wherefore hast thou sent me? Like, why have you sent me here? Why have you done this to me? For from the time that I went to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he has afflicted this people, and thou hast not delivered thy people. And the Lord said, and the Lord said to Moses, Now thou shalt see what I will do to Pharaoh. For he shall send them forth with a mighty hand, and with a high arm he shall, shall he cast them out of his land. And God spoke to Moses, verse 2 of chapter Excuse me, I thought, that was chapter 5, excuse me, oh, this is chapter 6, there we go, chapter 6. So that was all chapter 5 that we just read, I don't know why, I, I read the numbers wrong, that's why, Roman numerals. And the Lord said to Moses, verse 1, Now thou shalt see what I will do to Pharaoh, for he shall send them forth with a mighty hand, and with a high arm shall he cast them out of his land. Verse 2, And God spoke to Moses and said to him, I am the Lord, and I appeared to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, being their God. But I did not manifest to them my name. Stop right there. Hmm. That's deep, isn't it? Because remember, there's an instance where the Melchizedek guy is calling on his God, and then Abraham calls on the name of another God. See, this is why understanding the concept that when I tell y'all that the Messiah was here in part for the most high like he's this is so crazy it's so it's so epic the most high is the most high I don't think people even under, do y'all understand what I'm saying I'm not trying to confuse you there are angels who are working in part right under the Messiah to do his bidding there are other little angels that do things for him depending on depend for them, excuse me, depending on the level of work that has to be done, the tier of work that has to be done, all that matters, right on? So I can't leave it up to a certain level of an angel who's not on that level. So in this instance, what we're hearing about right now, like, no, he doesn't turn to an angel of the Lord. He turns to the Lord himself. And then the Lord distinguishes like, yo, I, I appeared to these guys. I tell y'all, we're going to read about an instance here that's totally different than somebody just appearing. You're going to be like, you know what, Meach? That makes sense. You make sense right now. I'm going to be like, I know it makes sense. I'm not tripping. I'm not crazy. But check this out. Where are we at? Where are we uh That's right. Verse 3. And I appeared to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, being their God. But I did not manifest to them my name. And it says the Lord, right? And I established my covenant with them to give them the land of the Canaanites, the land wherein they sojourn, in which they also dwelt as strangers. Hmm. And as I hearkened to the groaning of the children of Israel, in parentheses, the affliction of which the Egyptians enslaved them, enslaved them, 
and I remember the covenant with you. Go, speak to the children of Israel, saying, I am the Lord, and I will lead you forth from the tyranny of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from bondage, and I will ransom you with a high arm and a great judgment, and I will take you to me, a people for myself, and will be your God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, who brought you, listen, who brought you from the tyranny of the Egyptians. Stop right there. Why is this so important before we turn it all down and I get ready to upload this? Do you realize that when I, it's not so much a mic passing that, that this brother used to say as it is the mediums are really being used to be spoke through. It's like when the Most High God actually manifested himself, Remember, he covered Moses with his hands. The Lord never did that to nobody. God, that guy, never did that to nobody. And that's not a knock to the Messiah. All other respect. But I know better. I'm trying to teach my people better. Understand that. We, oh my goodness, we are going to get to... We won't have to get it in. Tomorrow, the next day, the next day. Look for these pieces. They'll be coming. Spiritual gumbo.